let's see if we can use our concept of bond line structures to show a little bit more three-dimensionality to molecules. So we'll start off with a really easy one here. Let's let's start off with uh, let's start with propane. So I know that there are three carbons in propane connected to each other like that. This carbon on the left already has one bond, so it needs three more for a total of four, and it's implied those are carbon-hydrogen bonds. The carbon on top already has two bonds, so it needs two more, so both of those are two hydrogen. And the carbon on the right has one bond, so it needs three more bonds. So propane would look something like that. Now we know that those carbons in propane are all sp3 hybridized. So we know that the arrangement of atoms around those sp3 hybridized carbons must be tetrahedral, right? Those atoms around them are in a tetrahedral geometry. So how can we represent that tetrahedral geometry a little bit better? We can, we can attempt to do it in three dimensions. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to redraw my carbon skeleton here like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in those hydrogens on either side of those carbons. So by drawing this, what I'm saying is uh, all of those atoms are in the same plane. Those are all in the plane of the page, a two-dimensional surface. So whenever you draw a line, right, what you are implying if you're doing a three-dimensional bond line structure is that all of those bonds, so the bonds are um, in the plane of the page, right? So those five atoms are all in the same plane and so are those bonds. So if I if I were to draw a sheet of paper here, right? So this is my this is my flat sheet of paper, right? I could fit that I could fit those five atoms on my flat sheet of paper. So I could say, okay, so my three carbon atoms are in the plane of the page and then my hydrogens are coming off like that. So that uh, would indicate that all five atoms are in the in the page, and, and we use a straight line um, to designate that. What about, let's look at, you know, this hydrogen over here. Well, in order to have a tetrahedral arrangement of atoms, that hydrogen can't be in the plane of the page. It has to be coming out of the plane of the page. And we represent that with a wedge. So let me just draw a wedge here, and let's just fill it in. Okay, so let me let me make that, let's change the color on that hydrogen, let's make it a blue hydrogen. So I have a blue hydrogen coming out at me in space. So let me just write that down, I have a wedge, and a wedge indicates that the bond is in front, it's in front of the paper, it's coming out at me in space. So how could I represent that on my flat sheet of paper here? Well, if this is my if this is my eye, right? If I'm looking if I'm looking down on this molecule, um, I need to have a hydrogen coming out at me in space, right? So if if it's this carbon, right? I could draw a bond going up, and then I could go ahead and put a hydrogen on that bond, and I think it's a little more obvious to see that hydrogen is coming out at me, right? The bond is in front of the page. What about the other hydrogen? What about what about you know this hydrogen over here? Well. You know, this, this hydrogen and the electrons in that bond want to get as far away from everything as they possibly can for a tetrahedral geometry. So it's going to be going away from us. That's, that's the furthest it can get. So I'm going to represent that with what we call a dash. So this is a dash. Let me make the hydrogen magenta colored like that. So um, when you have a dash, if you draw a dash, you are implying that the bond is behind the paper, right? The bond is behind the plane of the page, or the bond is going away from you in space. So again, if I'm looking down the molecule here, this next bond is going away from me, it's going down, right? It's going this way, so let me just put the hydrogen on there so we can see that a little bit better. So, so that is what uh, that part of the molecule might look like. Let's uh, let's finish let's finish drawing um, wedges and dashes on our propane molecule here. So if I go to the top carbon, I already have two bonds in the plane of the page. So I need to have I need to have one of those hydrogens coming out at me in space, and one hydrogen going away from me in space, and that would complete the tetrahedral 
geometry around that carbon. Uh, this carbon, same thing. I already have two bonds in the plane, right? So I need I need another bond coming out at me. So there's my wedge, and I need another bond going away from me in space. So there is my dash, and. You see this pattern. You see this pattern of, of two bonds uh, to an sp3 hybridized carbon in the plane of the page, one bond coming out at you, and one bond going away from you. So this is uh, the best way to represent a, a tetrahedral arrangement of atoms on an sp3 hybridized carbon on a flat sheet of paper. Let's take a look at a much more complicated example, but it has it has some of that uh, three dimensionality that we've been talking about here. So this is a dot structure for penicillin G, and you can see the wedges and dashes that are present on this molecule. All right, so let's uh, let's look at some of those wedges and dashes here. Let's uh, let's zoom in here to this carbon right here. All right, so at this carbon, I, I already see three bonds to that carbon. Two of them are relatively in the same plane here for this ring system, and one of them is coming out at me as a wedge, and that wedge is connected to a nitrogen. So uh, if I were to draw one more bond to that carbon, I know that carbon has to have four bonds, uh, that bond that I would draw would be a dash, right? So I'll put a dash in here, and that must be a hydrogen like that. If I if I look over here at at this carbon right over here, it's the same situation, right? I already have two bonds in the plane, one bond coming out at me, and so the hydrogen that I draw must be going away from me in space like that. All right, so there's my hydrogen. Um, if I go, let's say, let's say I go over here, I go over here to to this carbon. Well, this carbon already has four bonds to it. So this carbon isn't going to have any hydrogens attached to it, right? It has uh, CH3 groups attached to it, right? So this right here must be a carbon, and this one going away from me in space must be a carbon too as well. Uh, let's go over here to to this carbon, right? Well, it has three bonds again, two in the plane, one going away from me, right? This dash here is going away from me. So if I wanted to represent uh, the other bond, I must use a dash. Sorry, a wedge, right? So this is a wedge right here, and this is a this must be a hydrogen like that. So you can you can see you can see the more of the three dimensionality of the molecule and, and what is connected to it. Let's 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 see if we can uh, count up all the atoms in this molecule here. So let's let's look at some carbons, right? Let's let's go over here to this part of the molecule. Well, I I know that this carbon right here, this is a carbon on my ring. So every, everywhere there's a bend, there's a carbon. So as I go around my ring, I'm going to get a total of six carbons like that. As I continue over over here, right, I know that this represents a carbon. I know that this represents a carbon right here, and then my carbon chain is interrupted by the presence of this nitrogen, right? I already know that this is a carbon right here, and we already talked about the fact that this is a carbon over here. This is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then we have a nitrogen on this part of the ring. We talked about this as being an sp3 hybridized carbon. This is also an sp3 hybridized carbon, and then we had our carbons on the end here and then this down here is also a carbon so there are a lot of carbons in this molecule let's let's count them up so there were six on our ring 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so there are a total of 16 carbons so let's go ahead let's go ahead and write the molecular formula what we have so far for penicillin G there were 16 carbons so C 16 how many hydrogens? Well, that's that's a little bit more painful, right? Let's let's see what we have here. This this carbon on the top of our ring, this one right here, right? It it already has three bonds to it, so it needs one more, so that gets a hydrogen. And it's the same for the carbons around my ring here, right? They all need one more bond to it, except for this carbon. This carbon already has four bonds to it, so it doesn't get any more hydrogens. This carbon right here has two bonds to it, so it needs two more. It needs two more bonds to it. It needs two hydrogens attached to it. Now, I could, if I wanted to, I could draw one of those hydrogens as a wedge. 
wedge, and one of those hydrogens is a dash. But it's not necessary. You you usually you don't do that if there's more than you know more than one hydrogen attached to a carbon. No hydrogens on this on this carbon double bonded to my oxygen. I've already drawn in the hydrogens on these carbons. No no hydrogens bond to this carbon, right? It already has four bonds. And I've already drawn the hydrogen on this carbon. Uh, no hydrogens on this carbon, but on these carbons out here, right, these are these are CH3 groups. So I need to draw in my hydrogens here on these guys. So there are three of them. And again, if you wanted to, you could show the three-dimensional bond line structures with wedges and dashes in this. But again, it's usually not done because there's more than one hydrogen here. And then don't forget about this hydrogen over here. So let's uh, let's count up how many hydrogens we have, right? So we have we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't forget about this hydrogen and a nitrogen. So that's eight, nine, ten. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then 18. This hydrogen over here is so a total of 18 hydrogens. So H18. How many nitrogens, right? Well, there's one here and one here. So N2. Oxygens. There are four oxygens. And then there's one sulfur right over here. So that would be the molecular formula for penicillin G. And again, the point was just to show three-dimensional bond line structures and, and to see how it applies to everything. Notice, notice that for sp2 hybridized carbons, like this guy right here, right? that's an sp2 hybridized carbons, we don't use any wedges and dashes because this carbon is sp2 hybridized. It is trigonal planar. So the whole... Uh, all the atoms around this sp2 hybridized carbons are in the same plane already, so we just use straight lines to represent that. Uh, same with same with all of these carbons over here, right? These guys are all sp2 hybridized as well, so everything is flat, everything is planar for these. So wedges and dashes you'd use for sp3 hybridized carbons, and you don't always use them. We we will study in in future videos um, when they are used and and uh, and when they tend to not to be used.